Laboratory experiences are a major part of their engineering education. The challenge in this case was, of course, under COVID-19, with students being away from campus and remote from each other, how do we essentially replace an experience that would have had students building an aircraft, assembling it in groups, then putting that into a glide, flying that to effectively determine its drag polar and performance, um, and then testing that performance uh, if they can't come to campus and they can't be in contact with each other directly. So what we set out to do was essentially come up with an experience that would still give students that very hands-on feel for the real world and sort of what was actually happening in terms of flight performance and what that actually meant, extending what they would learn in the lectures. But how again do we do this in a way that can be done safely and can allow them to experiment and learn from what they're actually seeing. If you want students to collect flight data, well, the solution's kind of staring you in the face. I mean, flight simulators have been developed for years for exactly this sort of purpose, to give this sort of experience, uh, whether it's a professional or as a, just a recreational activity. But the extent to which they're developed now, a lot of them have physics models in there that essentially calculate the properties of the aircraft based on the geometry and air force selection. Um, so it, it really captures what we would want students to be able to play with and it's a perfect sort of sandbox environment for them to do this. Because many of these simulators expect their users to have access to flight pedals, joysticks. Uh, they haven't developed a fantastic flying experience that is based simply using a keyboard and a mouse. Um, we also have to be concerned here with will students be able to run this on their laptop? Uh, will it be a Windows laptop? Will it be an Apple laptop? How do we ensure equity for, for all students such that they can all engage with and learn from this experience? After exploring a range of commercial and open source options, we eventually arrived at X-Plane, um, which had the advantage of being available in a number of different versions with varying levels of system requirements, being operational in both Windows and Apple systems, and having the advantage that students could freely download a full version of this that would operate for 10 to 15 minute flights uh, without hampering them and requiring them to actually invest in anything beyond the system they already had. The other challenge of equity being control um, and essentially ensuring that students didn't first have to spend hours working out how to fly the aircraft, uh, especially if they only had access to a mouse or keyboard, uh, which makes this really quite challenging. So the task was to come up with a system of autopilot options, um, most of which we had to modify on the back end in order to allow them to essentially be able to just set the aircraft into a glide and have the autopilot hold the orientation of the aircraft. Of course, having all these pieces come together still required taking the students through a number of different steps and showing them something that a lot of them wouldn't have really experienced before. So um, Daniel and myself essentially went through and created a whole series of videos that we then uploaded that went through everything of how to, how to load up the system, how to load the particular aircraft we wanted them to fly, how to set up their location in terms of navigation, how to choose which runway they wanted to take off, how to set and control the autopilot settings, um, and how to do this in both version 9 and version 11, uh, which were unfortunately quite different um, and certainly added a, a workload implication to basically double all the work there in order to really ensure that even someone with the access to a very basic machine would be able to run this entire experience. So live Zoom based workshops were then used to walk the students through the experience to explain them what they would actually need to do. And essentially what we're able to do was effectively have them take a, a basic little Cessna aircraft, the kind you, you'd see at every uh, small airport around the world, and essentially put that into a glide, use that glide performance to, to form the glide hodograph uh, from which they can extract uh, properties associated with the drag polar, and then apply this in all the various calculations introduced throughout this unit to estimate things such as range, endurance, uh, rate of climb, etc. Having estimated the performance of their aircraft, Students were then asked to set specific wind speeds, various altitudes and direction. And were then shown how to choose which runway they wish to use for takeoff, uh, which obviously has implications based on the environment they just set. Setting up real world challenges like weather, runway selection, was all part of us then posing the students with an open challenge. Given they now know the properties of the aircraft with which they're gonna be flying, 
how do I fly in such a way that I maximize the distance I will cover within a 10 minute period? Which direction do I choose to fly? Do I want a headwind? Do I want a tailwind? Do I want to spend time climbing? How is that going to affect my speed? How is it going to affect the ground I cover? How much fuel do I want to have in my aircraft when I start? All these were factors that the student then had to consider themselves, which would encourage them to really go back to the material and understand what the implications would be in terms of the performance of the aircraft. And what you are seeing here, essentially the range of different flight paths that the students chose. Hi, my name is Isaac and I was a student of the Aircraft Performance Unit in the second semester of 2020. I found this class to be unique and engaging because we used an industry standard program to collect data for our laboratories and analyze it rather than just being given a video and a spreadsheet to analyze. Um, this was a uh, fantastic way to learn because uh, it allowed us to critically think about what we were doing and why we were doing it rather than just being given content to rote learn and I uh, found this great a uh, great way to learn uh, and uh, be extremely fun. Yes, and completed MAE 2405 aircraft performance in semester 2 of 2020. The laboratories in this unit created the opportunity for more realistic applications despite restrictions on resources. In particular, brought into question the why of the material equally as strongly as the how. Overall, the unit was a challenging but fun and enjoyable learning experience. Hello there. My name is Kwan and I was enrolled in MAA 2405 Aircraft Performance in the second semester of 2020. I really enjoyed the unit, especially because of its really well done uh, lab activities. It uh, promotes the uh, interaction and conversation between students, something that we really needed at the time. Uh, it also helped us uh, connect the uh, material that we learned for our lectures with the unit outcomes. Uh, I really appreciate the efforts that Dr. Atkinson and the teaching staff have taken to make this unit really stand out from the rest. Thank you. So what do we learn? Um, apart from Daniel and myself learning a lot about flight simulators, which neither of us knew beforehand, uh, we did really learn that it can be an effective way of teaching aircraft performance. Um, the students seem to really respond to it very positively. Uh, and it was a chance to see how things work beyond just what's written down in the book, right? Beyond the equations and see sort of how a pilot would see this as well from their perspective. Now, what does that mean in terms of an engineering decision to how an aircraft actually handles and is controlled? Certainly let that I never want to be involved in IT support, um, having to support multiple operating systems and different versions, even of the same program, uh, was just a disaster um, and certainly moving forward it'll be something we'll be really looking at implementing just one version um, with the assistance of having computer labs on campus where this was installed that we knew everyone had equal access and finally these virtual environments can create a sandbox where students really are free to experiment and explore and challenge themselves challenge what they understand about the material and this is certainly an aspect i'd like to continue to take advantage of into the future